Oh, I'm actually a trained teacher, qualified teacher, and also I've been a broadcaster for just over 30 years. Predominantly, I was in music radio as a host on various breakfast radio shows, but all through that time, I was always involved in news, and I spent a good deal of time also in the newsroom. So I'm a newsreader predominantly, a broadcaster, and really it's all been all about uh, entertainment and information. That's been a wonderful and privileged career that I've had. Well, when you work in a newsroom in the, the old days, uh, you really didn't um, have a political opinion. So it took quite a while before I became politicised. And I think it was really the turning of the way uh, newsrooms were neutral. Um, we saw a, over a few years that lack of neutrality and that became a concern for me. And I saw Winston Peters doing quite a big pushback on that. So that was something that um, really struck a chord with me. So that's when I became more politicised and uh, had the opportunity through Winston to, to join New Zealand First. With the rise of uh, social media, obviously, um, but also the large global techs that have uh, sucked out advertising revenue from New Zealand and taken that offshore, that's been part of the collapse of the business model of our media organisations. So as a result of that, they were looking to get uh, more views, more clicks, and clickbait journalism rose out of that. So um, I think that's been a huge part of it. Now we've sort of moved from that through into an area of a lack of trust in, in news, uh, a lack of trust in the media. There are clear evidence of media bias, which is really alarming for our democracy. Um, with that rise of uh, lack of trust, you know, we need trust in everything, you know, trust in business, trust in our democratic processes, trust in our media. You know, you know, these are really fundamental trusts that have been breached. It's become far more aggressive, the approach of the reporters who are looking for the headlines because they have, you know, a number of reasons they're after that. They're after a more aggressive headline because they want that click. Um, but it's, it's really pushed us into a place where um, we can't trust that what they're reporting is fair and balanced. And that is so important for our democracy to have all voices aired. And when you have aggressive style news media that don't have that neutrality, um, we're fundamentally going down a pathway that it's going to be very difficult to turn away from. There's um, some unconscious bias in the media towards Winston Peters and that's been evident for a large number of years, whether it's the cartoons or the stories or the types of stories that roll out. Uh, he's certainly been a political figure who has, has copped a lot of that media bias. But I think part of the problem now that we're facing is that New Zealanders and 60% of New Zealanders that were recently surveyed with an Auckland University research project uh, no longer trust the news. Now that's very alarming, but more importantly than that is 70% are avoiding the news. So we have a population now avoiding the news from our mainstream media broadcasters. We not have a sound performing democracy if the fourth estate, and it's their responsibility, that's their role, is to hold power to account for the people. The for the people, part of that equation is now missing. People start doing their own research and they go online and even then we can't be sure that what they're seeing is fair and balanced and the information that they're receiving actually has validity. So now we're in a situation where we have no trust in our media or declining amount of trust in our media and what, what information they are giving us, but also the wild west of the internet. That's uh, really not leaving our democracy in a very healthy place. Well, I'm a centrist and New Zealand First, we have uh, wonderful policies that are about moving the nation forward, they're nation building policies. And when you have that kind of vital policy that brings us together, and this is all about democratic unity, I'm a very big supporter of, of our nation coming together, working together, kotahitanga. This is important because if you have the ide ideology of the left or the right pulling pulling at New Zealanders, then we're going to end up, you know, spinning out and landing up in a ditch. And we've seen that uh, the car that we're all in, the waka that we're all in at the moment, has landed us in the ditch. And I think we need to ensure that uh, we get the right tow truck to pull us out of the ditch and get us onto the right road. And that political tow truck is democratic unity.
Well, I've been an MP under New Zealand First and under the Right Honourable Winston Peters from 2017 to 2020. So I've had one term as a Member of Parliament. And what an honour and a privilege it was to work with Winston Peters, the master of politics. So I bring experience. I know how a select committee works. <laughs> I know where the toilets are, so I won't be spending my first six months if I'm honoured enough to be returned to Parliament. Um, so I bring that experience and that wisdom. You know, when you get blooded in politics, uh, you learn some lessons, so that's something I'll bring bring to the caucus if I'm, you know, privileged enough to be in that position. Getting consumed by the Beltway because I think it's really important that politicians are real people, that they're really grounded in their communities, they're grounded in themselves and their families. Because you know, being a real family person, I think it's so important that we don't lose our head and get overtaken by our egos of being, being leaders. Um, we are there for our people. And I think the most important thing I, found, I find from New Zealand First's perspective is that this is a party for the people. And that to me is why I want to be involved in politics. It's for the people. Winston is a political phenomena and I'm absolutely privileged to have spent time with him in the New Zealand First Caucus in the 52nd Parliament. Winston has a political intuition like no other political operative that we've seen over the last number of years. He is a statesman, he is uh, attuned to the people, and he is just a wonderful, amazing human being. I first met Winston uh, when I first started in radio back in the late 1980s at Hits and Memories Radio Lakeland in Taupo. And he came to do uh, a debate, a roasting with Jim McClay. And I met him and I just absolutely was inspired by his ability to dance on the head of a pin <laughs> and to um, really engage an audience. And, you know, I've kept my eye on him all through my um, media career and I just love the fact that he is the political phoenix of New Zealand. Well, everyone needs to blame somebody, and um, he seems to be a target for that. Um, I think people need to actually look at New Zealand First Record, look at Winston Peters' record uh, of delivery. And yes, he has been someone who's rattled the cages, and we've needed that, uh, but also he is, and New Zealand First, have delivered an incredible amount to communities, particularly in the regions over the last uh, parliament, um, but he has someone who has a political legacy that I think all New Zealanders will be proud of. Something that Winston said that really grabbed my attention before I became involved in politics was about giving people a hand up, not a handout. Now I understand um, through personal experience what it means to have a poverty consciousness and not have an abundance consciousness. And when we hand out to people, we actually keep them down. We don't enable them through their own vision and power and, and sense of authority of themselves to be the best that they can be. And so by giving a hand up, that is that empowerment tool that we need, particularly our young people to, to grasp and let you know, let themselves flourish in their lives. So I think for me, having that core um, vision of insp inspiration, empowerment, is so vital for not just young people, but all of New Zealand. We have to change our results that we currently have. The government's thinking currently has driven us into this ditch. So we, to change our results, we have to change our thinking. So we need to think bravely and we need to act boldly. And New Zealand First has a whole ton of brave thinkers. Hi, I'm Jenny Marcroft, and I'm the New Zealand First candidate for Kaipiriki Mahurangi.